This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 642 of Horse Tip Daily. A different horse tip, a different equine topic, a different equestrian expert every day. Horse Tip Daily brings the world of equine knowledge to you one day at a time. Today's tip is brought to you by EquestrianCollections.com. Hi, Coach Jen here, and thanks for tuning in to Horse Tip Daily. Today's tip is about snake bites and other wildlife hazards. It is an excerpt from the Horse.com's weekly horse health report found on the Horses in the Morning show each Wednesday. This one from episode number 383. But before we get to our tip, let's hear from today's sponsor, EquestrianCollections.com. Well, I'm here from the Horse Radio Network, and I'm here with Debbie from Equestrian Collections. And Debbie, we're going to talk about a program you have that a lot of people don't know about. That's right. You know what, Glenn? One of the biggest things people pull their hair out about with online shopping is the shipping. So we have come up with an idea where people can have unlimited shipping. They sign up for our unlimited shipping program. We have two options. The one-way program where you have unlimited shipping one way. That is, if you order from us, all of your shipping is paid. That costs only $29.95 per year. And we also offer two-way shipping. Now, this is $49.95, and we not only pay for your shipping to you, but if you have a return, we pay for the shipping back to us. So for only 50 bucks a year, you have unlimited free shipping coming and going uh, to Equestrian Collections. So this is, this is a program that is so user-friendly, and it is, our customers just love it. Wow, you, spend, you, you actually place uh, an order every two months, and you've paid for this very easily. Oh, gosh, yes. And you can place one order and pay for it, especially, I mean, the one way is only $30, twenty nine ninety five. It's a It's a complete win-win situation for our customers and for us as well. Sharon, on your website, on the comments section, posted, this is a fantastic idea. Amazon Prime offers the same thing, and I always take advantage of it. I now purchase more frequently from Equestrian Collections because I save so much money on shipping costs. Well, we love that, and thank you so much, Sharon. Um, I did want to say that... Um, this does have a few stipulations. It's for continental United States only. It's unfortunately not at this time for our international customers. So I did want to re- make sure that uh, they understood that. So if you live in China, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but that's EquestrianCollections.com. You actually go to the homepage, and right down in the middle, you'll see a, a, a banner ad about the unlimited shipping. Click on that, and you can go sign up today at EquestrianCollections.com. Now, let's enjoy today's tip. Well, it is time for our weekly horse health segment with Michelle Anderson from thehorse.com. And we've got Michelle on here, and and it's a timely topic because, especially for those of us that live in the desert, in the godforsaken desert that I live in, um, (laughs) it is that time of year where the rattlesnakes start rearing their ugly head. And if you notice, uh, we did post on Facebook a photo of one that was about the size of a tree trunk that was just minding his own business. I mean, I didn't run over him or anything, but I took a photo of him from my car, and it just serves as a reminder that this is the time of year, especially here, where the snakes start to come out. And it doesn't matter where you are in the country. Everywhere, you are not exempt, unless you live in Hawaii, from poisonous snakes. And rattlesnakes are everywhere. Glenn now moved to Florida. They have rattlesnakes down there, plus all sorts of other fun, uh, deadly creatures. So, What we're going to talk to them about today is what do you do if your horse, and I added this addendum, or your dog, is bitten by snakes, spiders, porcupines, scorpions, whatever. So we're going to get uh, Dr. Jones on in just a minute. But let's welcome Michelle Anderson. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I I live in the desert also, although I'm in the high desert. So the the snakes are still a little sleepy. It's a little chilly for them, uh, but we will start seeing those pretty soon uh, out in the in the badlands where where I ride, which isn't too far from my house. Um, All right, that does not sound like a very nice place to ride. The badlands. No, I ride in yeah. the badlands. That just doesn't sound. I pretty. ride. I ride in the badlands and Death Valley. Sounds like fun. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> you know, yeah. um, it, it's really, really beautiful. You, you have to appreciate the desert um, for, for what it is. I am really fortunate because we have the Badlands, which is the desert, and the junipers out to the east of us. But then you go west a half an hour, and we're up in the Cascade Mountains in the pine trees. So really, really spoiled trail riders here in central Oregon. Uh, but we do have to look out for those critters. Um, I've never come across a rattlesnake. I know they're out there. Um, we have scorpions. I don't think I've come across them. Um, but I, you know, like you, Jamie, I, I wonder what, what do you do if, if they do get your horse while you're out riding, especially. Um, so hopefully Dr. Jones will be here pretty soon to tell us all about what we need to do. Well, Dr. Jones is here, and we were just just given a little rundown about where these awful places that we live with those awful creatures that are trying to kill us. And Dr. Jones is here to tell us what, how do we save our own lives and the lives of our, our friends. <laughs> oh, I'm not a doctor so I, uh, for a human person, so I wouldn't say how to save your own life. I think you should probably get a specialist on for that. But. <laughs> It doesn't, we don't, we're not worried about ourselves. We can handle it. It's our horses and our dogs that I'm worried sick about. So what we're just talking about is the fact that it, it's starting to warm up here in the desert. Michelle's got a little while longer, but Glenn is down there in Florida. You're down there in Florida, and uh, it is that time of year. I saw my first rattlesnake the other day, and uh, it scared the bejesus out of me. And, you know, just such a timely topic is what do we do? How can we prevent it? And, 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 and what do we do if it happens? Yeah, and well, and, and my, my question is, what does venom do to the horse's body? You know, if your horse gets bit, um, what, what is that going to affect him as far as the horse's organs and, and circulation? Great, great question. The, the prevention part um, is, is a little hard to probably discuss or plan for because um, we live in the woods, you know, we live in the country, <laughs> and so do they. So, you know, the best thing you can do is keep your grasses low, keep your weeds down, that kind of thing, dark spaces that they like to hang out in, um, you know, minimize that, uh, that, that kind of thing. But um, anything you would do, you know, for around your house, the same thing with your barn. But as far as uh, the concern with the horses, this is... This is what happens, and I hope this will uh, calm down a lot of your feel fears, Jamie. Most of snake bites that are done, whether they're venomous or not, because they can be bitten by non-venomous um, snakes occasionally too, um, are not, um, the venom is not shot into the horse, and there are more local tissue irritations. So... More than not, more times than not, your horse might have gotten bit by a snake at one point in time and you didn't even know it, or got a mild swelling and resolved it out in the pasture on its own, fine, or uh, you did some cold hosing, don't know why they get a little swelling, and everything resolved fine. The, the worst case scenario in a snake bite is not actually the venom. It's the sharp fangs from a venomous snake that acts like a hypodermic needle and takes the bacteria from their mouth and injects the bacteria into the leg. That's the concern we have. Go ahead. So, so what do you do? So uh, most of them are, the con most concerning ones are the bites in the face because as horses are curious, they're putting their nose down in the grass to eat, but they're also putting their noise, nose in areas to check things out. They're very curious animals. The bites in the nose are the um, ones that we're most concerned about because their face will swell, and you can get occlusion of the nares and of the air passage. And some of those horses may need a tracheostomy in a very, very severe case or some sort of um, opening through the nasal passages to kind of keep the nares opened so that it doesn't completely swell over, uh, especially right down at the end of the nose. So you can even take those syringe caps and, you know, plug them in the nose if you're out in the, um, out in the trail. And that happens, and most times they probably won't get bit on the face out in the trail because you're going to have them under a bridle and riding them along. And, you know, if they get bit, they're eating grass while you're having lunch or something. But on the face, I mean. So that's your biggest problem is the swelling of the head. I would say immediately call your veterinarian. If you're on the trail, uh, get the horse back to the trailer as soon as you can without increasing the heart rate too much because that will also increase how much of that uh, area is going to swell up faster. Um, so you need to get back in a calm fashion and get them seen by a veterinarian. The um, snake bites in the legs, 
They're more of what we call cellulitis, where they get inflammation of that area. It swells up. They probably need antibiotics because they've injected some nasty bacteria into those um, little fang marks and made a nice little puncture wound that you can't lavage out. Um, any inflammatories, cold hosing, that kind of thing. In my so, experience, I've had both types. I've had them on the face and I've had them on the legs. The one on the leg, um, and this was a question Michelle asked last night, is when you see it, <clears throat> you're going to see the two fang marks. Not necessarily. The one on the leg was a pastured horse. I got called out during the middle of the day. They found the horse down. The leg is swollen. They're concerned. Is it broken? Uh, feeling it wise, it didn't feel like there was any what we call crepitus, where you feel the fractures moving, the two pieces of bone moving. I didn't feel any of that, but we wanted to be on the safe side, so we took x-rays. There was no fracture, so we treated it like a cellulitis. It was very hot and painful, so we had on antibiotics, any inflammatories for the inflammation, cold hosing. You can even do some sweat bandaging if it's low enough in the leg, and this one was. By the time we got the swelling down, which is about two or three days later, we saw two small fang marks on the back side of the leg, and they were oozing wow. out some serum. The, swell, the reason you don't see those fang marks is because it swells up so much in the skin, it occludes the holes that those fang marks go in, and you don't see the serum coming out, and you can't see the little tiny holes. So you can't always see the fang marks or the um, spider bite, or the, not spider bite, the snake bite holes until the swelling goes away a lot of times. So would you treat, sorry, let me just jump in here real quick and then I'll let you take over. Uh, uh, so would you treat a, a cellulitis typically like all the time like you would a snake bite? Is that, was that just like lucky that you happen to do all the same thing? Yeah, I think you would treat most of them that way. Some of the cellulitis, cellulitis especially in the hind limb, can look like a lymphangitis too because the whole leg swells up. So you treat a lymphangitis maybe a little different than your cellulitis. But they're pretty close in treatment, so you wouldn't be so far off that you're ruining any chance of the horse to recover. You just might have to alter a couple days into it, alter your treatment protocol to a different strategy. So. Okay. So, so in my area, we also have uh, other creepy crawlers uh, like scorpions. So is a scorpion sting going to be similar to a snake bite as far as treatment? No, I would probably put a scorpion sting. Now, of course, the smaller ones that a aggravate you a bit more, as opposed to where Jamie is, it's going to be a, probably a bit more of an aggravation and, and a worry. Um, we have those the small guys here. Yeah, we have the small ones as well, and they really just kind of, uh, it's kind of like a bee sting. They do a little local inflammation. It, it's a little bit painful, that kind of thing. So it's more like a spider bite, um, but not as um, tissue eating, flesh eating as a spider bite is. Um, the spider bites can be a lot more um, necrotic when they bite and the tissue just sloughs away and it's like tissue paper and it oozes out black stuff and that kind of thing, where the scorpion bite might be more like a raised welt bee sting kind of thing. So you mentioned the spider bites and those are the other kind of creepy crawlies. We have the brown recluse where I'm at and black widows. Um, so what, what are you looking for if you think that your horse has been bitten by a spider, is it, is it, does it go from zero to nasty like you just described, <laughs> or is there uh, an intermediate step? Well, the intermediate step is the immediate swelling, and you'll actually most times see those um, big bites because they get black and blue, and you'll see those two black and blue holes, where in a snake bite it's not because you don't get black and blue holes when you get vaccine injections. Um, so the snake bite is more of a uh, hypodermic needle where the Spider bite is, is nastier, especially like a brown recluse, something that's going to have a little bit of poison to it. And they have um, more of a black and blue and then becomes brown necrotic and, and starts to ooze out some black stuff in the center. Um, but that swelling and the two dots, the so black and blue dots, is what you'll probably see right off the bat. And then oh, a couple days into it, two, three days into it, you'll start seeing uh, indentation in that area and the tissue starting to peel away. And they're very, very painful in that area. Yeah. So you treat them... We similar to the gonna, snake bite. <laughs> we had a, a cat that was a house cat and uh, when we lived in Pennsylvania, and all of a sudden this, this cat started losing, like, its tissue on its one leg was going away. Yeah. And finally it was just disappearing. It was the strangest, weirdest thing. We had no idea what it was. We brought him to the vet, and within three days almost all of the tissue on his leg was gone. Yeah. Um, and the cat ended up dying then, then the, that day, I think the third day. 
but it was just, you could see the bones. I mean, it was the b- most bizarre thing and grossest thing that we probably had to deal with with a little critter like that. And then we determined then, we found a black rec- or brown rectus spider in the basement. Um, huh. And uh, that's how we determined to keep an eye out for those. But, uh, yeah, that was, that was scary. So you described exactly what you'd probably see in a horse, on a smaller scale, though, in a horse, because it stays pretty much localized. It would get about as big as a baseball or grapefruit, the swelling can, but the center necrosing area can go from dime to quarter size, and if you jump on it right away, it doesn't get much bigger than that if you, you know, get your antibiotics going and all your anti-inflammatories, cold hosing and such. But um, back to the snakes, and, and Jamie has the question is, what does it do the animal, you know, especially with venom? Um, I have the luxury of a um, snake expert in my practice. He's the son of one of my clients, and just the kid ever since I, I've known them for over 15 years now, ever since he's been a young teenager or, or a older adolescent, has this huge curiosity in snakes and spiders, and he decided to go on. He's at the uh, college now, and he's uh, got a degree, biology degree, in doing his research on snakes as we speak for a master's and Ph.D., and um, he and I were chatting about snakes at one time, and he said there's so much variation. Nobody really knows what is actually in the venom of the snake when they inject it, um, all the components of it and what it, how it affects the uh, body is completely different, and it seems that humans have a higher effect from the snake venom than animals do. And it's probably, we had this discussion, we were laughing about it, it's probably the fact that humans know they get bit by a snake, they get their anxiety up, they get scared, their adrenaline starts running, where an animal out in the field gets bit, well, they get bit by lots of things. They get bit by flies, they get bit by, you know, wasps and bees and all sorts of stinging nettles in the grass and all sorts of different things, so fire ants, now that you're down here, Glenn. But yeah. <laughs> they get bit by all these, all these sorts of animals and critters that a snake bite, yeah, it probably hurt, but it also felt like probably a vaccine, too, and, <laughs> and they don't get as anxious, possibly. But the other thing is the, the size, you can't necessarily say it's the size, because in his experience, he's seen very small miniature toy dogs do just fine with a snake bite, and he'll see German shepherds fall over dead from a snake bite because he's gone to numerous talks by veterinarians on the subject of small animal. And, of course, I don't do small animals, so I'm just interpolating his uh, facts he's found. But uh, these, um, the dogs, you can't say that every small dog that gets bit by a snake or a venomous snake is going to definitely die. And every large dog is not going to die. He says some will drop dead immediately, some will have swelling and then die, and some don't have any problems at all. So now, it, so it just it, depends on what, what area they hit how hard they hit, and what bacteria is in their mouth, really. So just to clarify, it's not like the old Westerns where I'm supposed to get off, get out my pocket knife, cut the little X, and suck it out of his leg. Suck it out. (laughs) You can do that, Glenn, if you'd like, and um, I want somebody to film it. (laughs) Put it on YouTube and see how many hits we get. (laughs) No. No, that's uh, really old-fashioned. That's not what we need to do. And most of the times they don't inject venom. That's a lot of product for them to put out. And unless they're going to actually eat their animal, they're not going to waste the venom is basically the thought. So why waste it on something large they know they cannot take down and eat? They're going to use it for something that they can paralyze and eat later. So they, they can actually regulate when they squirt and when they don't? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they can regulate when they squirt the venom and when they don't. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, not every single venomous snake bite has got venom in it. It just could be the bacteria, the bad mouth, the nasty mouth, you know, huh. after it ate a rat that, you know, the intestines and everything going in, you know, has all that bacteria, <laughs> if you think about it, in their mouth, and they inject that into you. And that's what causes the blowing up of the face in a horse, the blowing up of a leg, is the bacterial infection that they just put into a puncture wound. Now, question for you. Uh, I'd never heard of this in my entire life until I moved out here to this godforsaken desert. Uh, is they, the, the vet that I, does my vaccines for my dogs is like, do you want to get the rattlesnake vaccine? And I was like, what? And it, apparently it's a vaccine out here that they give to dogs. Now, I thought, well, of course I want to do it. That's, that's the perfect thing. I mean, heck, they get bit by a snake, they're going to be fine. And she said, no, no, no. It doesn't make it fine. It just gives you more time. And and we have, on the horse side with the vaccine, we have an article from uh, University of Kentucky uh, up on the website. It's number 18557. 
Uh, and it, it does mention the vaccine, but that it's not well documented in horses yet, uh, the efficacy of that. Um, so that uh, is available, but, um, and Dr. Jones might be able to tell us more about that, but according to, to what we have on the horse.com, um, maybe not, not documented yet. Yeah, because there is no death known of two horses from snake venom. There's suspicion on a couple foals but it's not documented for sure. And you can't say, oh, because they were small horses, they got bit by a venomous snake and they're going to definitely die. Again, it's, it's a speculation. And they think, too, and this is, again, another answer to your question, Jamie, they think, too, that the, how does the venom work? It gets in the circulatory system and it affects the heart, and the heart gets damaged. And they think that some people who have had a, a venomous snake bite will have heart conditions later in life. And some of that has been documented, but they can't really track it as that was definitely from the snake venom, but they're pretty suspicious of it. So maybe that's uh, what happened to that one or two folds that I've heard about um, that have died after a snake bite is they immediately got into the bloodstream and went to the heart and caused um, heart conditions. But for a foal to have it and then die later of heart conditions, there's just no documentation on something to affect. But back to your question about the vaccine, there's no need right now for us equine veterinarians to say, oh, you should absolutely have this for your horse because we don't have any documentation of adult horses dying from snake bites unless it's a secondary complication, which is necrosing of the tissue, um, and we can't control that necrosis and that tissue sepsis, or it's the suffocation of the face because they didn't get in in time for us to put a tracheostomy into them or open up the airways. Those are two of the complications that you'll run into post-snake bites, um, and so anytime you're suspicious that you have a swelling due to a snake bite, you should probably have your veterinarian check it, and they're going to treat it like a puncture wound and or uh, some sort of cellulitis. But the dog and cat one, I cannot, or the dog one, I cannot, because I don't do dogs, cannot give you a definite uh, on that, Jamie, but I was familiar, familiarized with it through my distribution person uh, many years ago because we had dogs run, my, my dogs run on 10 acres, and there's, you know, venomous snakes here in Florida. And my husband and I are concerned about it, and we checked into it, and it was only available in California at that time. They have now branched it out to the rest of the United States where you can get it. It is available to the rest of the United States, but there, there isn't a whole lot of documentation, I don't think, with that vaccine, even for the dogs. Now, again, I'm not a dog vet. I go with what your dog vet's recommending and follow their lead. Well, you know, honestly, it was my horse vet that was <laughs> talking to me about doing the <laughs> vaccine on the dog. So, of course, it's like that. So, yes, yeah, and, again, that's why I was asking you because she she was like, yeah, I kind of don't know really either. So I, I, I opted to not get them all vaccinated because, again, it just seemed like it wasn't really 100%. So I, I, I laid off. I was like, well, let's just see what everybody else does. <laughs> right, and that's kind of where I'm sitting, too. And, you know, I hope to God my, my dogs don't get bit because my husband will shake his finger at me and say, I told you so. But, uh, yeah, I'm kind of sitting out and waiting to see what the um, fallout is of it. And it's been out there for many years now. So it's just not a, a heavy pushed item, um, probably mm -hmm. because, again, the venomous part is not always injected into the animal. Uh, you, you're, what you're going to get is what they saw, you know, what Glenn had on the cat is just the necrosing of the area from the, ba the bacterial injection. Right. Well, I have to ask about one other thing before we run out of time here. And uh, Dr. Jones, have you ever had a horse uh, come across a porcupine and end up uh, quilled? <laughs> we don't have porcupines here in Florida that, you know, I have to have that worry. But there are cases, and I've read the case studies on them. But, yes, they have, and it's usually on the nose because of the curiosity thing again. You know, they got their face down into them, and they'll get the quills in the nose, and those things have backwards barbs. You cannot just yank them out. You yeah, need to like see a, a veterinarian to get those out. <laughs> so, yeah, just like yeah, we have hook. we have porcupines yeah. here. <laughs> hey, yeah, and yeah, and they're nasty. I haven't ever had in either of my horses uh, quilled, but I've had friends who've dealt with it with their dogs and their horses, and and it hasn't been pretty. Ooh. Yeah. So, well, mm. They don't shoot them. Jamie was mentioning earlier about them shooting them. They don't shoot them. You have to actually touch the porcupine, or he touches you. Yeah, they would shoot them. <laughs> they have to touch them. <laughs> that, that would be awesome. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. 
<laughs> now, That's the one, one thing I have seen here <laughs> is the 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 um they have trainers out here that work with dogs and horses, and basically, if you know they, what they do with the dogs and the horses is they do a rattle from a rattlesnake, and then you know basically spook the horse or spook the dogs to make sure that they when they hear that they run. Yeah. No. <laughs> my my dad for his uh, big retirement thing um, from work, he went on a ride with his buddies down in Wyoming and they came across a lot of rattlesnakes and I was telling Dr. Jones about this. One snake jumped out at a guy and the horse spooked so hard that the cinch broke and uh, the horse left the rider in the saddle behind with the snake. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know that I don't know that I want to train my horse to run from the snake. <laughs> but. Back up slowly, slowly. Well, yeah. you guys, this has been so helpful, and I really do appreciate it, especially with the time of year that it is. So, obviously, uh, the horse.com is going to have some information about this online. Can you tell us where to find it? Yep, the horse.com, and that was article one eight. Five five seven, really, really good in depth article about dealing with snake bites and horses. My two right. cents on snakes is is that there are some good snakes out there that eat rats and mice. Please be kind to your snakes. There are some good ones that you need to probably have around your barn to keep your rodent population down. So be kind to your snakes. And I'll well, have and everybody know snakes. we have we have not killed the black racer snake that's living on our front porch. We keep good. it. Good. Right. It's a little spooky. <laughs> yeah, but he, what he's doing, Glenn, is he's sitting on your front porch and he's keeping watch for any of the other poisonous spiders because he's probably very territorial and won't let anybody come on the property. So never kill a, a, a snake that is, you know, you know, just live and let live. Come on. We also haven't had any guests that wanted to come knock on our door either. So. <laughs> <laughs> no Jehovah's Witness in your house. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Well, thank you, guys. Dr. Jones can be found at FloridaEquine.com, right? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you, Dr. Jones. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, guys. (laughs) Look, I didn't even get grossed out at that topic. Well, that's because it's stuff you actually have to pay attention to. I know. Because it could be you. It could be you. But at the... Yeah, I, you know, it's just one of those things that it, if it happens, what do you do? And basically, um, what I got out of that whole thing was get your horse to the vet. No yep. matter what, get your horse to the vet and your dog, obviously, as well. So uh, kind, of, kind of suck. Well, there you go. Fantastic information to have around, especially this time of year when the critters are more active. To listen to more tips from thehorse.com, just go to horsetipdaily.com. Go to the experts drop down menu on the left, and there they are. If you love listening to Glenn the Geek and Jamie putting in their two cents on horse health topics, tune in to Horses in the Morning on Wednesdays at 10 for your weekly fix of up to the minute horse health information. You can also go to www.thehorse.com to find a mother load of horse health information covering pretty much every topic imaginable. And don't forget to support our sponsors here on Horse Tip Daily because they make these podcasts possible. Today's podcast has been brought to you by EquestrianCollections.com. Check them out today and look into their fantastic free shipping offers. Please stop by the Horse Tip Daily Facebook page and let us know what you think of the tips you hear on the show. It's also a great place to tell us about topics you'd like to hear us cover on the show. You can subscribe to all the great shows on the Horse Radio Network through iTunes or Zune and get your horse podcasts automatically downloaded to your iPod, Zune, or mp3 player you can also listen to the shows right on facebook the players right there every day i'll be back again tomorrow with another new expert and a different horse tip until then go ride your horse the horse radio network and the horse radio network hosts are not responsible for statements of guests or their opinions use your own judgment when listening to the tips provided by the experts on horse tip daily (laughs) 